Hello trainers, I'm back, and welcome to another episode of Pokeology, a show where each week I talk to you about the biology of Pokemon based on the research that I have found. My name is Professor Sacrum, and without further ado, allow me to introduce to you the Pokeology subject this week. Today, we will be studying the Forest Knight Chestnut. As per usual, we will be asking the following questions when we look into each Pokemon. What does it look like? What does it eat? Where can I find it? What does the Pokedex say? How does it survive? And how do I train it? Let's not wait any longer and start to analyze what Chestnut looks like. Chestnut is a bipedal Pokemon who has plant-like characteristics. All Chestnut haul a large dome-like shell that acts as a type of shielding body armor. This shell has been said to resemble a chestnut. The armor itself is of a pale beige coloring with four particularly large spines protruding from the back of the shell. The armor shell also has a red and green trim running along the outside rim. On the part of the shell covering chestnut's shoulders, there are two smaller spines. Now whether or not chestnut and the shell are connected is still being studied, and I'm leaning more towards the side of the two being separate. However, if they are connected, then I would say that the green chest plate is what keeps Chestnut and the shell connected. Chestnut's body is the same beige coloring as its shell, and its arms and tail are protected by a green plating as well. Now let's start getting into the minor details about a Chestnut. Starting off with Chestnut's head, we can see that it is of the same beige coloring as a majority of Chestnut's body already. The difference here is the brown patch of fur on its forehead. Speaking of fur, Chestnut's face is completely surrounded by it. This white fur reaches as far as Chestnut's hips. Now here is where things are a little odd. You'll probably notice that the part of Chestnut's arms that aren't covered by green are the same color as the rest of its body. Well, you'd be wrong. If you take a good look at Chestnut's arms, we can see that they are not the same coloring as the rest of its torso. This is because Chestnut's body is completely covered by a type of armor made of the same material as Chestnut's shell. The only pieces of Chestnut's real fur are seen in the areas previously stated, being their faces, chests, and arms, which do not need to be covered in the beige armor. Only by the green plating on Chestnut's arms, which can morph into what looks to be a buckler shield. Now, there is something I want to bring to everyone's attention. Notice Chestnut's claws. Don't they look a little... different? Especially if we look at Chespin and Quilladin. Well, I have a few thoughts on this. Nothing confirmed, but hear me out. These claws can be brown for one of a few reasons. Either Chestnut's claws are in fact brown, or they're more like thorns, roots, and even more wild, vines. If this is true, it makes sense since Chestnut is a grass and fighting type. At the moment, I'll dismiss them being roots since Chestnut doesn't learn ingrain as far as I know. But Chestnut does learn Vine Whip, which could make me believe that they are indeed vines. Now if we're using attacks to prove and disprove, we might as well mention that Chestnut is able to learn Needle Arm, which could confirm that Chestnut's claws are thorns. However, it is possible to miss the small spikes on the green plates of Chestnut's arms. They help this Pokemon perform Spiky Shield when the plates morph. So at the moment, I will lean towards vines. On the other hand, there is another possibility. The reason that Chestnut's claws are brown could also be that they are protected by a type of armor. Because as we can see at this point in Chestnut's evolutionary line, both Chespin and Quilladin have claws. However, these claws are not brown, but they're white. Which could mean that in the process of evolution when Chestnut gains its full body armor, the claws on both Chestnut's hands and feet become encased in armor as well. But I'll leave that up to interpretation for you all to decide. But before we switch topics, I would like to point out one thing, and that is the black lines all across Chestnut's body. On the torso, legs, and potentially fingers, there are breakings in the armor that allow Chestnut to have minor mobility. As for the lines on the arms, I can only assume that they are banding that allow the green armor plates to stay in place. Well, Chestnut is very simple. Being a grass-type Pokemon, they have the ability to gain nutrition from the sun using photosynthesis. But, since Chestnut are primarily mammals, being in the field egg group, they love different types of nuts, berries, and sweets. 
Due to the Pokemon Wildlife Association forbidding any sort of information to be released to the public about the starter Pokemon and their evolutionary line, I am unable to release the information of where you can find them in fear of being arrested. But what I can tell you is that chestnut are normally found in forests near the bases of mountains. This is due to their love of the forest's natural food supply and peaceful atmosphere, as well as the mountains being a perfect place for chestnut to train their fighting capabilities. However, if you do want a chestnut of your own, you're going to want to be a beginning trainer in the Kalos region. Professor Sycamore allows new trainers to choose Chestnut's pre-evolution, Chespin, along with Fennekin and Froki as first-time Pokemon partners. According to our little gizmo of information, Chestnut is number 003 in the Kalos Pokedex and number 652 in the National Pokedex. Chestnut are classified as a spiny armor Pokemon and are grass and fighting types. The average chestnut is about 5 foot 3 and weighs about 198.4 pounds or 1.6 meters high and 90 kilograms in weight, depending on your preferable unit of measure. Here are two statements that Kalos and Hoenn researchers had to say about chestnut. Its tackle is forceful enough to flip a 50 ton tank. It shields its allies from danger with its own body. When it takes a defensive posture with its fists guarding its face, it can withstand a bomb blast. That's incredible. I'll update this section with annotations on the screen when more information about Chestnut has been released to the Pokedex. With the research that we've gathered so far, we figured out a very basic understanding of what Chestnut is. But, if we take that information and delve further, we can find out exactly how it survives in the wild. If we start off with the what does it look like section, we know right off the bat that Chestnut's greatest form of defense is the shell on its back along with the armor around its body. Although I'm not entirely sure of what it is made of, we do know that it branches off from the leaf-like armor that Chespin have. However, I do think that the shell is the primary way for Chestnut to gain any sort of nutrition from the sun. Chestnut's arms are more than likely a high form of offense due to the species being able to learn wood hammer and hammer arm. However, the Pokedex does also state that it can tackle something devastatingly hard, which is why it can learn Giga Impact. And this is probably because of Chestnut's incredible defensive abilities. The shell on Chestnut's back is so resistant and the Pokemon have muscles developed so strong that they are able to knock anything out of their path. This is great for surviving as well, since any Pokemon bigger than Chestnut are going to have a hard time taking it down. At the same time, Chestnut are in the rodent-like family, which makes them prey for flying and fire-type Pokemon. Talonflame is one of Chestnut's biggest fears, since they outspeed Chestnut immensely and are capable of using super effective and powerful flying and fire-type moves such as Brave Bird and Flare Blitz. But that doesn't mean Chestnut will go down without a fight. Chestnut have adapted and learned to fight back. Remember when I said Chestnut's claws could be vines? Well, in the scenario that they are, Vine Whip allows Chestnut to reach Talonflame and take it from the sky to bring it down to its level. Here, it can then barrage Talonflame with a tackling move or a seed move like Leech Seed or Seed Bomb. Now, the question I had was, where do the seeds come from? And then it hit me. The bristly fur on Chestnut's face and chest produce seeds! When you look at Chestnut attack with these moves, it opens its chest and shakes its fur. But remember, this is only speculation to what I believe to have discovered about this Pokemon. Now if we go back to the Pokedex, we know that Chestnut can withstand a bomb blast. Well, when Chestnut uses Spiky Shield, it presses its fists together and the armor on its arms morphs into a shield that covers Chestnut's entire front body. So if for some reason Talonflame avoids Chestnut's Vine Whip, in the wild, Chestnut has to react and protect itself. So what better way than form a shield that can take an explosion and leave Chestnut unharmed? Not to mention that Spiky Shield will cause Talonflame to take damage on itself when it comes into contact with the Spiky Shield. Aside from battle instincts, we learn that Chestnut are a gentle species that will protect their friends, allies, and loved ones using their own bodies. Again, everything in this section is just speculation, and nothing has been approved by the PC or the GFI. The first thing you're going to want to know about Chestnut is that it is a grass and fighting type Pokemon, which gives it a 2 times weakness to fire, ice, poison, psychic, and fairy types, a 4 times weakness to flying types, and a resistance to water, electric, grass, ground, rock, and dark types. Chestnut's weaknesses do outweigh its resistances, but with the sat distribution that it has, Chestnut is still very viable. 
Looking at this chart, we can see that Chestnut has two spectacular stats, with its attack being 107 and defense being 122, which are incredible for taking and dealing heavy damage. Chestnut also has a decent HP stat at 88, which helps give Chestnut longevity in a battle. The rest of Chestnut's stats aren't as good, but don't make it bad. If Chestnut was able to have a boost in special defense, it would be able to take damage for a long time. However, with Chestnut's current stats, there are some ways that you might want to train your Chestnut. Before we get to that, let's take a look at the abilities. Chestnut is capable of having either one of two abilities, being Overgrow and Bulletproof. Overgrow increases the power of Grass-type moves by 50% when the Pokémon with this ability's HP is below one-third, and its hidden ability Bulletproof protects the Pokémon from some Ball and Bomb-type moves. Here's a list of the moves that are affected by Bulletproof. Pause the video if you'd like to read them all. But now, on to our move sets. This first set is going to require that you have a Chestnut with an impish nature and the ability Bulletproof. Give it either the Leftovers item or Rocky Helmet item to hold, then make sure you spread the EVs 252 HP, 4 attack, and 252 defense. Next, make sure it knows the moves Leech Seed, either Spiky Shield or Synthesis, Spikes, and in the last slot, either Wood Hammer, Hammer Arm, or Drain Punch. This set is to help push momentum for your team by being able to set up spike layers on your opponent's side of the field. Leech Seed is pretty much crucial on Chestnut because it allows Chestnut to gain additional recovery while bringing some damage onto your opponents. Spiky Shield is always good to have because you can use it to stall with Leech Seed and scout out what your opponent is going to do next. Plus, if your opponent goes for a physical contact move, they will take additional damage. Synthesis is a good substitute if you worry about Chestnut being worn down more easily because you'll regain more health. Lastly, Wood Hammer, Hammer Arm, and Drain Punch are there to deal direct damage. All of them have their drawbacks, with Wood Hammer dealing recoil damage, Hammer Arm dropping your speed, and Drain Punch lacking power. The choice here is yours. The next set is more of a risky and gimmicky set. It requires you to have a Chestnut with a jolly nature and the ability Bulletproof. Give Chestnut a Salic Berry to hold and spread the EVs 12 HP, 244 attack, and 252 speed. Then give it the move Substitute, Belly Drum, Drain Punch, and Seed Bomb. This Chestnut build works in a different way than most sets. The goal here is to try and get Chestnut safely behind a Substitute and use Belly Drum. Because of the 12 EVs and HP, doing these moves will activate the Salic Berry to be consumed and max out your speed, being able to outspeed most of the Pokémon in the UU tier of Smogon. Something to note with this set is that you will want to keep Chestnut at relatively high HP, as it becomes less bulky due to the lack of defense investment. Our next set comes from the well-known trainer class Alex from the Dex. So thank you, Alex. This Chestnut set requires you to have one with an adamant nature and the ability Bulletproof. Give Chestnut the leftovers item to hold and spread the EVs 252 attack, 252 defense, and 4 special defense. Then give it the moves Hammer Arm, Bulk Up, Seed Bomb, and Synthesis. This set is really to help break your opponent's momentum in battle. If you want to see it used properly, click the link. And finally, we have the Chestnut set I prefer to use, which isn't all too familiar. Grab yourself a Chestnut with an impish nature and the ability Bulletproof and give it the leftovers item to hold. Then spread the EVs 252 HP, 4 attack, and 252 defense. Then give it the moves Spiky Shield, Leech Seed, Drain Punch, and Super Fang. This Chestnut has the classic steal your opponent's life while you gain health back technique. Setting up with Leech Seed allows you to gain at least a quarter of your HP back on top of the leftovers recovery. Drain Punch is a good offensive move where you can deal damage and take some HP back as well, thus improving your longevity. Super Fang is there mainly to break incredibly wally Pokemon such as Quagsire and Slowbro. Catching a threatening switch in with Super Fang doesn't hurt either, especially if you have Hazard support. This will add much more pressure to your opponent, making them think twice about switching. And there you have it, Chestnut, the Berserker of Kalos. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to drop a like. It helps me out by spreading the word that people like you would be interested in this video. Also, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe if you like the content I push out on this channel, so that way you'll be notified whenever I upload a video. Also, don't forget to leave your friend code in the comment section below so that we can have a battle and so that you can enter yourself in the Sacrum Raffle, where you have the chance to win the Pokemon discussed in this week's episode of Pokeology. I'll be posting the winners on Wednesday, so be sure to tune into that. And you might even catch your own battle if you send me a battle code as well.
Well, that's my show for this week. Thank you guys for watching. Again, my name is Professor Sacrum, and please be sure to join me on Saturday while I will be live streaming live on twitch.tv forward slash Professor Sacrum. The link is in the description. Also, if you don't tune in for the live stream, there's no problem because Monday I have a Pokemon Wi-Fi battle coming up. So please be sure to tune in to that and especially tune in next week where I have another episode of Pokeology. See you next time.